Welcome to the Veterans View Show. And I'm Leroy Davis, I'm your host, and today we have with us Darren. Darren, uh, tell us a little something about yourself as far as your military service, and then take us into our topic today, which is our Veterans for Responsible Leadership. So we're gonna get into that, but first we wanna know something about you. A little bit about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my name is Darren L. Harris, and I am originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I am a proud United States Marine Corps veteran. Okay. And currently I reside in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, where I live there with my service dog, and everything that I do is to help veterans. Mm -hmm. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm helping veterans. Not only that, but I'm also the National Vice President for a Veterans Fraternity. It's called Theta Nu Beta Veterans Fraternity Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And so we're a group of veterans helping other veterans all across this nation. And so we're excited about what's happening. We're a fairly new uh, organization and fraternity. And so we usually, you know, ask other veterans to be a part of that. And it doesn't matter, you know, your age, your race, nationality, you know, orientation, all of those things. You know, if you're a veteran, you know, we, we welcome you. So most importantly, uh, right now, I serve as the national chapter director for an organization called Veterans for Responsible Leadership. Right. And that's what we're here to talk about today and the great work that they're doing. Okay, and then uh, just to go back, where is your fraternity headquartered out of? So we are headquartered out of Indiana, okay. but we're all across the nation. Okay. And so we're headquartered out of Indiana. Uh, but we have started setting up chapters. So here in Alabama and in Georgia, we, you know, we've combined our efforts. And so we have fraternity brothers who live actually right here uh, in Russell County. In fact, one of them has a joint partnership at a place called T-Bone okay. uh, State. So he's over there and that's Brother Escoffier. And so we have uh, many veterans and we have some who work in Columbus, but they live in Macon. You know, and so we have many uh, of our Theta Nu Beta Veterans Fraternity Incorporated brothers who live really close. Okay, yeah. well, well, we'll get back to that later. Uh, with Veterans for Responsible Leadership, can you share a bit about uh, your journey, transition from military service to your involvement in the various groups that you're in now? Yeah, so to be honest with you, my uh, involvement with veteran issues, I won't say it's fairly new, but what happened was, as a veteran, mm -hmm. uh, once, and a lot of people don't know this part of my story, I was a homeless veteran mm -hmm. uh, living in Florida, and mm -hmm. I met a lot of other great veterans who had the same story. And so I began to have a heart and a compassion for veteran issues, and how could I, uh, as a veteran who was able to overcome those challenges, help other veterans? And so my journey into that is one who also lives with a disability. Uh, I sustained a traumatic brain injury in 1996 mm -hmm. while serving in the military, and a lot of people don't know that, a part of my story. Uh, but through that, a lot of things transitioned with me, I dealt with, and you know, still have to go to VA, see my therapist, and, and things like that. But I said, while I have this time as a disabled veteran, I wanted to give back. I wanted to give of my time. I wanted to give of my energy uh, to, to veteran issues. And so I started doing a lot of research while I was in Florida, and I learned that there were several things and gaps in the system where veterans needed help. Mm -hmm. One of the most uh, blatant things is the fact that veterans have to, uh, once they discharge, fight to get their disability. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been advocating for, and hopefully other veterans can see it the same way, and maybe we can lobby some Congress folk, uh, that veterans upon discharge as an active duty service member, you know, we go through this medical examination. Mm -hmm. And so upon discharge, there should be a provisional disability rating. You have the service member and you have the medical record. Well, and you know right now they're doing that. When you get discharged, for instance, at Fort Moore, you see a VA uh, rep before you get leave for a benefit. So they got your medical records and everything, and they do your claim. So if, if you're in medical hold, you are, you'll get your claim back before you're discharged. So they are doing it. They may not be doing it fast enough, but they are doing it. 
Now, you know, I, I had to do my research, so I went to your website. Okay. And so I wrote some questions down. That's what okay. I'm asking you these questions. All right. Uh, you know, because we want to keep it real here on the Veteran Review Show when we read. And uh, we want them to really understand what Veterans for Responsible Leadership is all about. Yeah. So my next question for you is, as uh, someone who has served on a national advisory board and nonprofit organization, what do you consider to be the most critical uh, quality of responsibility leadership, uh, particularly when it comes to supporting veterans and veterans' families? So yeah, that, that's a great question. It's a stacked question, yeah, but I'm going to do the best <laughs> I can to, to, to answer it. Let's go back to the origins of Veterans for Responsible Leadership. Okay. So on January 6th, this nation changed forever. Mm -hmm. And we all know that. And individuals who are part of the insurrection, many of them were veterans. Those veterans were intentionally recruited by extremist groups mm -hmm. and for obvious reasons leadership, communication, weapons training, all the things that we learn as veterans. And so it was just, you know, we as veterans were prime targets and we still are. Mm -hmm. And so Veterans for Responsible Leadership recognized that democracy was under attack. Veterans for Responsible Leadership is a 527 uh, super PAC. Mm -hmm. And so we have been designed and developed to uh, curtail these extremists from targeting veterans. And so uh, as we go through our work as Veterans for Responsible Leadership, our message uh, is always to veterans that, you know, you are part of something bigger and larger and you don't have to be connected with these extremist groups in order to have your sense of patriotism because that's what they target on. So where I come in, uh, as it relates to Veterans for Responsible Leadership, we recognize that if we're going to do great work as a 527, a nonpartisan organization, there's only so much you can do. But what they have recruited me to do is create a 501C19, mm -hmm. which is something like a nonprofit, but it's a veteran specific nonprofit if you would look at it that way. The difference is we can lobby for veteran specific issues. Most nonprofits, you know, you can't lobby. But as a 501c19, if there's a veteran issue that needs to be lobbied on behalf so, of veterans, we can do that. And that's what I'm working towards right now. So you guys you want to become like the American Legion, uh, disabled American veterans, uh, a 501c19 that can lobby for veterans and spend, spend money on veterans. So, so that that's great. Correct, but we, we're going to really focus on the political aspect of it political. as well, and mm -hmm. and getting veterans into civic engagement, and making sure that they understand that their voice matters when so, it comes to voting. So you're going to uh, really hit voting a lot, and 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 try to explain, which is something I do, try to explain to people that your vote counts because your vote controls what's happening in your county. Yeah, and if you're going to elect people to office, you need to understand that your city council, your county commissioners, they all control, and your legislative representative for your county, they all control what happens to you here. You can't look at Montgomery and get mad with what happens here because your legislators control it. And so that's the same thing that I'm working on. This and we year. also want to encourage veterans <laughs> to run for office. That's going to be another thing. When exactly. we talk about leadership exactly. development, mm -hmm. we also want to educate veterans on the importance of voting, but also to identify veterans so that we can lobby for veteran-specific issues. One issue here, and I know you've been working really hard on it, is veteran treatment courts. Mm -hmm. Well, veteran treatment courts are only in 27 of the six. 64 counties in the state of Alabama. We need that to be statewide because veterans live all throughout Alabama. And we're working on that as well uh, with the state because we go to the Alabama Association of Drug Court Professionals conference every year. And they're the ones who pay for the Veterans Treatment Court. And thank you for what you do. Yeah, when I met you, I was excited. I was like, this is the man I need to know. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue on, but right now we're going to take a, a station break so they can pay some bills. <laughs> well, let's pay some bills. America didn't begin with a revolution. It began with the spark of an idea. 
that a nation born of enlightenment was within our grasp. And the duty was owed not to a king, but to one's country and all its citizens in equal measure. Preserving this spark is the goal of Veterans for Responsible Leadership. We strive to achieve the government our founders dreamed of, the government our citizens deserve. We're working hard to strengthen civil engagement, to ensure all our officials are held accountable, to support the integrity of elections, to protect the nonpartisan nature of national defense, and to expand public service opportunities. Because we know firsthand the benefits of being part of something larger than ourselves. Democracy demands exceptional leaders, men and women of character who represent the values of our nation. We stand with candidates who engage in honest discourse, who are dedicated to working hard for all people, who put our country's interests above their own ambition, and who believe that as long as we remain a world leader, the best is yet to come. The service men and women, our responsibility to our country never ends. Now more than ever, the legacy of our forebears is under attack. We oppose any leader who abuses voter trust, weakens our nation, or fails to uphold American values. We encourage every principled citizen to stand with us against these threats to our democracy. We are veterans for responsible leadership. Together, we will ensure that this great experiment, a government for the people and by the people, does not expire, and that our nation's flame continues to burn bright. Welcome back, and we're still talking here with the representative from the Veterans for Responsible Leadership, uh, Darren. And and we will, uh, Darren. Before we uh, get back into questions, I want to talk about the leadership of the organization. Uh, uh, Dan, who's a retired a, a Navy SEAL? Yeah, he's a Navy SEAL. So Dan Burkhoff is the founder and president of the organization. Dan is a Navy SEAL, went to Navy Academy. Academy. Uh, I tell you, Dan is a great guy. He's passionate mm -hmm. about veteran issues. And I've had several opportunities, of course, to be in meetings with mm -hmm. him. And so his passion for this is deep. In fact, it's so deep that, you know, they've also, meaning Veterans for Responsible Leadership, have partnered with another organization called the Lincoln Project uh, to show how uh, right. we are nonpartisan and we work together with uh, other groups on the behalf of democracy. But Dan uh, has been doing this work for quite some time. Yeah, I was impressed when I was reading the website on Dan, being that he's a Navy SEAL, and that he, uh, after he got out of the Navy, he went back and became a doctor. Yes. Uh, also, his attitude about why he started uh, Veterans for Responsible Leadership. And, and I was reading about it, and he was uh, uh, a little, I won't say upset, but disappointed how our politics have changed in this country, and people are trying to take advantage of veterans and use their leadership uh, uh, for things that it was not chose to use. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, veterans, especially such as yourself, a Marine, uh, uh, Army, y'all was trained to go into the field and fight the enemy. The Navy, we was trained to fight them on the water. Yes. And, and so was the Marines, because of part of the Navy, and the Air Force in the air. So, in other words, these uh, groups of uh, people in this country are trying to get that expertise training so that, and my, I ain't gonna say so they can overthrow, but it's not far from overthrowing. Yeah. So, and then they, they uh, talk about veterans uh, uh, in, in such a bad way. You want the veterans help, but then you're gonna criticize the veteran. So, uh, uh, is there anything else you wanna say about Dan? Because I noticed also on the website that it's a couple of guys on there that uh, graduated from West Point. Yes, yes, we have a lot of uh, officers who are part of it, and it's a very diverse group right. um, in terms of veterans who are part of the organization, but we also have some dedicated civilians who are part of, in fact, uh, Addie, uh, Abby, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Ad, Abby, mm -hmm. who is our executive director, uh, she is not a veteran, but right. she lives here in Alabama, and so we're so happy to have her a part of the team, mm -hmm. but she is dedicated to veteran issues. 
And, you know, you if you're in Alabama, you're going to hear a lot more about her and you're going to see a lot more of her because she's right here and she's one of our own. Right. And, and, and I don't want to name no name, but as I said, though, when I uh, was looking at the website, you, you, you've, you've got Dan, you, uh, you've got a couple of other guys. One of the guys was a, a F-18 pilot, Super Hunter pilot. Yes. So uh, it's very diverse, and, and they, the education is, is there as well, being a Navy Academy grad and West Point grad. So it, it's something that, to me, it seems to make this uh, veterans for responsible leadership more stronger because of the leadership and where they're being. And, and a lot of people who don't have any contact with veterans or military at, at all, they don't recognize that we are trained to adjust, adapt, and improvise to do any kind of job there is to do. Yes. So, and, and that's another point that I, I wanted to say that because if, for instance, being an officer in the military, whether you Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, or Space Force, you can come to, here to Fort Moore and not know anything about the Army as a Navy guy. And you got uh, a couple of hours to adjust, adapt, and improvise and be able to do the job. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and vice absolutely. versa. Absolutely. So, I wanted to get that out. Now, anything else you want to say about your executive before we move on? I mean, I just appreciate what they've done. In fact, you know, if there are people who are out there and they want to read up more about the organization, uh, it's a simple website, VFRL, and that's Victor uh, Foxtrot. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so VFRL, uh, RadioLima.org, and you can read more about us mm -hmm. there as well. Great, great. And, and, and I know he just gave you all those military titles for you veterans, you understand. But for your veteran spouses or anyone else who <laughs> understand, just just Google Veterans for Responsible Leadership. Yeah, Google us. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll go straight to them. Now, uh, in your opinion, what are some of the common misconceptions about veterans for responsible leadership? Well, I would... First say that, you know, we and I've even received some hate mail and individuals will come on my right. social media and they will call us, you know, non-patriots and they will call us, you know, undemocratic and or they'll call us liberals and we'll get a lot of different negative comments right. and, you know, and we understand that. But one of the things we also understand is that we're here to help veterans, unlike these extremist groups who are there to exploit veterans, right. to take advantage of veterans, and in some cases even abuse mm -hmm. and undermine veterans as if veterans can't make their own decisions uh, about what's happening in the nation and the climate of the nation. And so we're taken advantage of, as you also mentioned. And so we get a lot of uh, you know misconceptions about who we are as a group, but we are a nonpartisan group. And I say this to many people that I, I talk to, you know, when it comes to veteran issues, it's not a Republican issue, it's not a Democrat issue, it's not a partisan issue, it's an American issue. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do at Veterans for Responsible Leadership. And so what I endeavor to do as the national chapter director is to identify, and we're starting right here in Alabama, that's the great thing. Mm -hmm. So our first chapter is here, but we have other people who are interested uh, and if you're in Alabama, once again, just go to the website and you can put your information in. But we have began our first chapter right here in the state of Alabama. And so we're looking for more people to join our efforts. Now, in addition to that, as we uh, solicit veterans to uh, engage in a political process and maybe even consider running for office, we want to help develop those veterans. But not only that, but we want to build a sense of community uh, as it relates to veteran issues because there are several different issues uh, that veterans need to know about, you know, and I know it's the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and that's why, once again, I was excited to meet you because I need to learn how to do these things in a better way as well so that we can serve and service more veterans right. doing this work. And so that's what we're going to do as a 501c19 uh, and we call ourselves the association for Veterans for Responsible Leadership. So you have Veterans for Responsible Leadership, which is the 527 Super PAC, and then you have 
the Association of Veterans for Responsible Leadership. Okay, and, and getting to my, my last question, and you mentioned earlier that you had TBI. You yeah. got injured in, in the military. And, and TBI, uh, a traumatic uh, brain injury, uh, how do you, uh, given your experience with organizations, and fo- how do you focus on mental health challenges? Is what I want to know, especially dealing with other veterans, because I know how I, what I do dealing mm-hmm. with them in the court system. Mm-hmm. I want to know your approach. Yeah, I think as it relates to, let's talk about Veterans for Responsible Leadership first. Mm-hmm. Um, we understand that veterans come with disabilities, and it's not just a physical disability. Sometimes it's these invisible disabilities right. as well. Uh, and so I'm sensitive to that. And many people who look at me and sometimes even talk to me, sometimes they'll question, well, what is your disability? Not that I have a challenge with people asking me that question, and I don't mind sharing my story, uh, but I think it's important for us as organizations to recognize that, you know, we're going to have veterans Mm -hmm. who have challenges, whether it's mental, behavioral, and so, uh, you know, even today, I, after I leave here, I'm headed to my therapy appointment. Okay. So there are things that I have to do for myself uh, in order to uh, become better. Uh, in addition to that, another thing that's important for veterans, I have a service dog. Uh, and so understanding the American Disability Act also applies to veterans. And mm-hmm. so educating veterans on these things and also educating veterans on other benefits that could be helpful for them mm-hmm. uh, is just really important. And, and you know, one of the things that I, I like to do and I tell people is we have to educate the veteran's family as well. The spouse, uh, the significant other, they need to know what's going on in your life. They need to sometimes go to an appointment with you so they can see and hear the story that you're telling, uh, uh, why you can't sleep at night, or why you can't uh, stand when it start thundering and lightning. Uh, the families need to, and once they understand that, they can give better support to that veteran. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? Well, you mentioned that, and one of the things I didn't uh, talk about, but for about 10 years in Louisiana, I served as the CEO of Louisiana's first and only statewide family support organization. Okay. It's because you mentioned family, and our focus was on the youth who are at imminent risk of out-of-home placement. But mm-hmm. what we utilize is what we call the wraparound process. Mm-hmm. And that's everyone who was involved in that child's life. And so not only did we uh, supply youth support, but we also had parent support. And it was about bringing the whole family together. Mm-hmm. And so not only were we transforming systems, but we were transforming lives. And you mentioned that just now, and we have to create the same type of approach when it comes right. to veterans. So it has to be a wraparound approach because here's what we know that when you uh, help the veteran you know you got to help the families Mm -hmm. and if we're going to help the families then you know we we know that once we do that there's help there's hope Mm -hmm. and there's healing and so that's pretty much what i want to say we got to help all all aspects of it and you know that's how in, in veterans court that's how we lose veterans sometimes is because we don't reach out to the spouse or the significant other to let them know what's going on because a lot of cases we can save a marriage and, and, and stuff if the spouse knows what's going on. But when the veteran is having issues, whether it's TBI, or PTSD, alcohol or drug, they don't share with their family what's going on. So the first thing end up happening is they end up getting a divorce. Whereas mm-hmm. We found that if we share information with the spouse, significant other, then we can pull that family back together. But we can't share it without the veteran's permission. But, uh, but a part of our system is if you go going to be in our court, then I need to bring your family in so they can sit down and see what the judge is going to say to you and what I'm going to say as the mentor coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. this has been a great show. Great right. talking with you, Darren. Well, thank you, I appreciate and, uh, it. And we look to uh, visit with you some more. Maybe get your executive director next time to come with you. Okay. And we'll talk about some more things that you guys are coming up with. All right. Okay? Thank you so much, sir. So, I appreciate the show today. All right. Uh, veteran you. View, a great show. And we appreciate your organization, uh, Veterans for Responsible Leadership. 
And uh, that's our show for today. We'll see you in two weeks.